So I'm going to be showing you how you can use unions in GraphQL with Apollo Server. Now I'm going to show you first the situation where I like to use unions and then we're going to see how we can implement them. So first off, situations where I have multiple things that I may want to return and the type may be different for them. So an example of this is errors. So here I have two types of errors that might occur, a validation error and a timeout error. Um, and so I have this type called error, and this is what it looks like when you might implement it without a union. And I have a field on here called validation error and a field on here called timeout error. And you can see I made them so they can possibly be null. So if I throw a validation error, or not throw, just return a validation error, a timeout error will be null and vice versa. So then in my register mutation here, I am returning possibly an error. Uh, and then just for the example here, I'm switching between throwing or returning a timeout error and throwing a validation error. So let's see what this looks like. So here's what the register looks like. And you can see here, I am seeing if I return a validation error, I want these fields. Oops. And if there's a timeout error, I want these fields. And if we run this, you'll see this is what it looks like. So for register, the validation error was null, but the timeout, we got this timeout error. All right, and if I run this again, I have them toggling back and forth. So now I see these fields. So we can basically consolidate this. So there's really just one item returned from this, and that is the error. And we can do that with a union. So we can kind of clean up some of your uh, object shape um, in your, in your uh, schema. So how do we go about turning this into a union? So basically, I want to create a union between the validation error and the timeout error. To do that, I'm going to create a, I'm, I guess I'll just replace this error type. So instead of type, we're going to say union. And then we specify uh, the two or as many as you want types that it's going to uh, join together. So here it's going to be validation error or timeout error. And you just put pipes in between them. And then we can use this like uh, any other type. Um, so like our timeout error, we can just place it right here and that works just fine. Uh, so next, how we have to do it is we have to add a resolver for uh, this. And we also have to either return a validation error or timeout error from our register. So let's start with that. So we're now gonna say error is equal to this object or an error is equal to this object. So here we're either returning a timeout error or a uh, validation error. And then we're just returning that error down here. Then the next thing that we have to do is create a resolver for uh, the, the, the union. So in this case, I called it error. So I'm gonna say error in my resolver map. And then there's a special type that or a special uh, function that we have to implement called resolve type. And what this takes is the parent or the object itself. And we're going to return uh, what this object is. So what this is going to be, and I really shouldn't say parent, I should say object. Uh, what this will be is it's either going to be a validation error and it's a timeout error. And basically Apollo is asking you or GraphQL is asking you, is this, which error is this? And so what you do is you check whether this object has a certain field. So I could say object dot reason. Then I'm going to say it is a timeout error. If object has a field, I'm going to return that it's a validation error. So what I did there, and otherwise we're just going to return uh, null. So something went wrong. These are the two fields that we're expecting. So basically what I did there is I picked a unique field on each type. So in this case, a unique field is actually called field. I could chose message two. And the unique uh, one on timeout error is reason or seconds. We could have used either. So basically I'm checking if this object has a value of reason on it, then I know it's a timeout error. So I return the name of the type, timeout error. Here I know that the object has a field on it. So I know it is a validation error. So I return the string validation error. And so for every union that you create, you're going to have to add a resolve type for it. Um, but once you set that up, that's all you have to do. And then basically you return the error. And what's going to happen is this object or this object, depending on what you pass in, will actually go to the resolve type function. And that's how GraphQL knows the type. All right. So what does this look like to actually query this now? 
So we're going to refresh this. Now instead of saying a validation error, timeout error, we can say dot 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 on validation error. And then we can say dot 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 on timeout error. And what basically what we're doing here is we're saying if it returns a validation error or if it returns a timeout error, uh, we specify what fields we want from those types. All right, so now let's run this. Uh, assignment to constant variable. Oh, it's because I made my error constant. I'm just going to rename that to let. All right, let's run this again. And now we can see register return an error, and it says email is already taken, so we got a validation error. If I run this again, this gave me back a timeout error. So you notice this is how we can actually get different fields returned for register uh, based on what the resolver returns. But we're still type safe because we're specifying what fields we want. So if I want to, again, I can only select as many fields as I want. So here it's only going to show the field and only going to show the reason. All right. So that is how you do unions. You select them like this. And then to implement them, you say union, give it a name, and then you specify the types you want it to union with. Uh, and then you create a resolver for that union. And then whenever you use this union, you have to just uh, return the one of the two objects that you expect. The other thing to note with this is you'll notice we are returning unions. We can't actually use unions, say, as an argument. So I don't know if you want to have this email or username, for example, or something like that, or email or Facebook login. You can't, you can't have like a union input as of right now. You can only use unions for the uh, object types or the stuff that you return. So not for the actual inputs. Anyway, that is unions. Hope that helped.